I recently covered a topic on how to install Moodle on a Mac laptop. If you haven't seen that, check out the link below in the description. For this one, I'd like to show you how to install the Moodle LMS on a cPanel server. If you don't know what that is, then this video is probably not for you. If you do know what cPanel is, then you're in exactly the right place. My name is Chris Richter, and before we go any further, please check out the courses that I have on the Moodle LMS, both for uh, how to use the platform as a teacher, how to create courses, and also a little bit on programming as well for those that are Moodle administrators or that are PHP programmers who would like to know a little bit more about how to get in and do things, what the nuts and bolts are of the Moodle LMS. But we're going to look at how to install Moodle on a cPanel server step by step. It hopefully won't take us too long to do that. So first of all, you need to log into your cPanel server. Once you're in there, obviously the very first step is to go and create a subdomain where you're going to use the Moodle LMS. Definitely recommend you use a subdomain. Don't use a folder underneath an existing domain because it will make your life so much harder. So jump into your subdomains, create a new subdomain. We'll call it My Moodle and put that into Ricochet and we'll just create our subdomain. Now that we have our subdomain created, all we need to do is go into our subdomain folder and upload Moodle. So let's jump into our folders, into File Manager, and then into my My Moodle folder that I have. And there's currently nothing in there at all. So all I need to do is upload Moodle to this folder and unzip the Moodle platform. Before I do that though, let's go and download Moodle. You can go straight to Google and search for Moodle Download. There we have our Moodle downloads. We need Moodle 4.0, which is the version we're doing. We have here the stable version or the latest official release. It's up to you which one you choose. I'm going to go with the latest official update from Moodle. And you can download either a TGZ file or a ZIP file. Doesn't really matter which one. Back in our control panel, we need to choose upload. Make sure the maximum file size allows you to upload the size of the Moodle file. We're going to grab the ZIP or the TGZ file and upload that to our server. That's now completed. We can close that tab and go back to our file manager, select reload and you'll find the Moodle 4.0 zip file is just there or compressed file is there. We're going to extract and extract it into the root folder. So my moodle.ricochet.com to So we'll just extract. And close. Notice that it automatically put that into the Moodle folder. In the Moodle compressed file is a folder called Moodle. So we just need to move all of those files back up. But I'm just going to delete this one first because we don't need that again. So we'll get rid of that. We'll go into the Moodle folder. I'll select all and I'll just move it all up one folder. So just get rid of that. And move all of the files back up. Up one level and we now have all of our folders, files that we needed. So that's all we need to do for that part. Let's close the file manager, close our download page. The next thing we need to do is create a database. So to do that, we go to MySQL database wizard. I'm going to call the database my Moodle. It automatically puts in the name in front of your database for you. So the database name becomes all of that. We go to the next step. I need a username. This is the user account that will connect to the database. So I'm just going to call it Ricochet my Moodle. Just for the exercise of this, I'll grab a password or generate a password. I've now got a password in there. I'm going to choose create user, create that account, select all privileges so that this user account, so I've got user and the database name. I would grab a copy of that now, just so you've got that stored somewhere else because we're going to use that user and the database name in just a moment. We're also going to use that password that we created just a moment ago as well. So don't lose that either. Choose make changes. We are now back at the main screen of cPanel. So what we've done so far is we have downloaded the zip file of Moodle. We've uh, created a subdomain. We've uploaded the compressed file. Got everything ready to go. So now it's a case of starting the actual Moodle install process. To do that, all we need to do is go to the subdomain that we created. In this case, it is mymoodle.ricochet.com.au is the 
site that we created or the subdomain we created. If we go straight to that in a web browser, it then asks us to go through the install process. So choose your language. That bit's fine. We go next. And it needs to confirm path. So this is where it decides where it's storing um, the data. And I'm just going to, I like to keep, if I've got multiple Moodle servers, uh, Moodle builds on the, same, on the same server, I create a new Moodle data folder. So I'm just going to call this my Moodle, Moodle data, my Moodle, just to keep it as a separate folder. <clears throat> Go next. Now we need to know what type of SQL database we're running on here. In this case on cPanel, mine is actually a MariaDB. So I'll choose that first off rather than have to change it later. If yours is MySQL, then that's in that's fine if it's native MySQLi. Uh, or if you're using Postgres as well, you may want to use that instead. It's up to you. MariaDB is the one I'm using on this server. The next screen takes us to the settings that we need. So we need our database name. That's our database name, ricochet underscore my Moodle. A database user, which in this case is actually the same name. Normally you probably wouldn't do that, but I did in this case, um, probably create a different user, make it more unique. The password, we need to put in there for the database. So you should have kept a record of that when you created that earlier. We choose next. It will confirm all about the copyright. So we need to confirm that and we understand them. It will then go through and tell us whether everything is correct. If there's any issues, if there is any issues, you may need to go into the PHP settings in cPanel and add some of these extensions in that may not exist. I believe Sodium might not have been in there initially. I think there might have been a couple of others. MB string probably was, but may not have been. So you may need to go into the PHP settings and add some of those in. So we'll just go continue and that will run through the install process where it will go through and install all the database tables, everything else needed for the database to run. While it's doing that, just jump back into cPanel and scroll down to PHP. If I go into PHP version, I can go to extensions and then I can go through the list for the current version of PHP that I'm using, which you may have had to change or may not. But you can go in there and you can choose MB string, which may have been missing. Sodium, I think, was missing when I first installed it on this server. I think the majority of the others might have been there. I know GD used to be missing, but uh, and you may need to add in the the database uh, MySQLi or uh, whatever you're using to read the the database as well. So that's where you can go in and add those settings, those extensions to put them in for the current version of PHP that you're using for this installation. But let's jump back to our installation, and you can see it's installed all of these tables and it says success. So we just go continue. We need to create a username. I'll leave it as default admin for this exercise, but you should change that to whatever your administrator username is. You need to put in a password different than your database password. This is the login password. So get this correct and keep a copy of it for how you log into Moodle when you first log in. You'll need to put in your email address as well. It's a required field as well as the password. We'll put in there, fill in the rest of the details if you have them, and then choose update profile. So we need to put a full site name in. My Moodle, my Moodle just as a single word. This can be a full site name. Click save changes. Support email is required. So I'll just put mine in there and save changes. You can also register. And if you read through the description as to why you might want to register for uh, your site with the Moodle listing as well, you can do that. I'm going to skip that at this stage, so I'll just skip. And that's it. That's all I had to do to connect and set everything up now. When I say that's it, there's actually one last task we have to do. And that is we need to set up the cron task that runs in the background in cPanel to make sure that any of the tasks that run as part of Moodle are set up. So let's go and do the cron. Go back into cPanel. You'll see in advance, there's an option called cron jobs. In the cron jobs, all you need to do is choose once per minute, which is when it will be run. So that's an asterisk in each one of these. The command that you'll need to put in is based on where PHP lives on your server. On a standard cPanel server, um, it will be this location, but it may be different for you in that this is user local bin PHP home, my server name. So that's not the URL, but the actual server that you're living on and you need to check your cPanel settings to know what that is. Then the subdomain, so in our case, that was mymoodle.ricochet.com.au. Then admin CLI cron. Once we've done all that, we just select add new cron. 
and that's all we have to do and it should all be working. Now we're going to test that to make sure the cron works and then we're out of here and all done. To check that the cron is running all we have to do is go back into our Moodle server, go to site administration, select or type in tasks as our search, scroll right to the bottom and choose schedule tasks. Then all we need to do is just check that there is a last run date and that last run date is obviously the same as what the current date and time is or close to it and if if it says never all the way down there in that column that says last run if it says never then that means the cron still isn't running and there is a problem with it you need to go back and fix that up back in that cron setting in cPanel otherwise as long as it's showing you that there are some uh, crons being run or cron tasks being run then everything's good and you are right to get on with using your new Moodle server. So congratulations, that's awesome, well done. Any issues, make some comments down below if you need to, happy to help out. Otherwise, check out the courses that we have for you uh, at courses.ricochet.com.au and I'll see you in the next video.